Hi, it's Karen here, back with Karen Coates, and in part three, the previous video of the memory game, I had shown, showed you the empty window, and I had started to add the grid layout to the window, but then it wouldn't display. And so um, I went back and I figured out why it wasn't displaying and how to get it to display. Um, but before I show you that part, how to do it, I wanted to show you the design part. Um, that you can, it's an option that you have with Windows SE, or not Windows SE, excuse me, Java SE, that allows you to preview your code with Window Builder. That's what I was trying to say, Window Builder. And this is what you get in a Window Builder. There's a little source tab here that shows you your, your Java code, and then there's a design tab here where you can actually preview, hey, what's it gonna look like? And this little memory game that I had done in my older version of Java, or Eclipse SE, has just these flowers showing because I was just playing around with the idea of making a memory game at that point. But what you get is something that shows you what you have to work with within uh, Java Swing. And that's why I wanted to show you. Um, you got your system, first of all. And these four items I don't actually use generally when I'm designing, but down here, as you come to containers, this is actually pretty useful because you can do what we've done so far, which is the entire window, which was a J frame. And then you have J panel, which is something you can layer on to your, um, to your J frame. Or if you just want the J-frame itself, you have these layouts to choose from. You have an absolute layout. You have the flow layout that I was talking about where it just, it's kind of like a Word document where you start typing a sentence and you get to the end of your line. When you run out, it wraps to the next uh, line. That's kind of what your flow layout is. And then you have your border layout. And the border layout has the vertical bar that, or excuse me horizontal bar across the top and it is labeled with capital letters um, to spell out the word north all in caps and then on the bottom there is what you're familiar with probably from a website a footer and that that is also in capital letters south and then you have in the center you have a pane and to the left, you have a pane that's called West, all in caps. Center is all in caps. And then right is actually called East in, it's kind of like a compass, basically. And how the border layout functions is you can choose this layout even if you only have one frame to put in your, in your layout, in your, in your panel or your frame. And the center will just expand to fill the entire space. And so if you don't have north or south, that's fine because center will just fill in what whatever is missing. And so for our layout, we are gonna have the two items. We're gonna have the center panel, which we want to expand and take up as much space as it needs for the grid of cards. And then we're gonna have east, which is for the, the button and the display of the score that shows how many matches they've made as they go along, how many points they're getting. And so that's all we were gonna do is just those two cells because, or two components of the layout. Now what you can also do that's kind of uh, fun about the layouts is you can put any other kind of layout within a layout so you can kind of subdivide it down and so what what our plan is is to take this border layout and divide it into like I said center and east and then we're gonna put the grid layout in the center and then we're gonna put another grid out grid layout a second one inside of the east and I will show you how we do that and there's also these other layouts to let you customize. Grid bag layout, a little more complex than just the standard grid layout. 
Um, card layout is another option you have where you can stack your components on top of each other and only one card's visible at a time as it is as the Java doc explains. There's the spring layout. There's the form layout. MIG layout and box layout. Those are your basic options. So we're going to work with border layout and grid layout. And then let me just close that. And now Stutz and Springs, this is not something we're going to use on this project. So I'm not going to go over that right now. Components. Okay, this is something, these are all the options that you have available to you when you're in GUI. And I have used many of them. But for this project, we're going to use JLabel. And that kind of explains it in the little Java doc thing. And let me just go somewhere else for a minute. And then we also want for this, we want J button and we're going to use that quite a bit. And then you can see you have all these other options, which is really kind of fun that you can choose from. All right. And then we have containers and the containers are, are what can actually hold those components that we just looked at. And we're going to be using JPanel. And in the, let's see, we already looked at the components. And then swing actions. Okay, that's something that we're not actually going to be using. But you have menu items too. So if you were designing like a web page or a game and you wanted different options that would hide off the screen when they're not in use, that's kind of what menu is for. And then AWT components, this is the older version of things that are a little more clunky than the other components. But you have these options available to you. And J goodies is just the ones that I just hid. We've got the create label with, with string and create title with a string. So that's kind of what you have going on in here. And if I click on this design board, you can see uh, the properties of what's going on in here. And this video is going to be about a 10 minute video because it takes a little longer to explain things. But you can see right here that the area selected uses the Java grid layout and it shows you the class of this item. And if you look above here in this little window, it shows you the picture is located here in our structure, in our directory tree. And it's within a panel with, a, with one column and one row. And column one, row two would be picture number four here. So it goes vertically first in this tree, and then it starts moving to the right. If you're wondering, well, how does this tree work? That's what that's about. And you can customize everything within it, within your grid, using Window Builder to help you, because it'll auto-generate the code for you, which is really kind of great. But if you hit um, the little ellipses, it brings up the border type. And right now there's no border, but these are all the options that you have for a border. You can choose any of them. And I'm just going to cancel because we're not doing anything right now. Now, if this didn't have a picture, but it did have text, foreground would be your text color. Okay, and you can choose from AWT named colors. That These are the constants with the capital letters. Or you can choose system colors. And they're named accordingly. And swing colors. Or we've got named colors. We've got the HTML version, or we've got the scalable vector graphics. You have a very wide variety of colors to choose from. And there's also the web safe colors. And you can sort them by tone, hue, saturation, or lightness. So you have multiple options all in one place. You don't have to search all over the internet to try to figure it out when you use this uh, window builder, which is really great for beginning. And so then you have the tab order, and that just tells you if you have multiple items or children that inherit within that spot, this is where you would use the tab order and 
we're not going to be using that. Tooltip text is kind of fun. This is where if you've been on a web page and you hover over an item and a little box pops up to show you what something is, that's what that's used for. So I'm going to stop here and we'll continue this discussion in the next video, in video number part four, or excuse me, part five, <laughs> and then we'll move on from there to actually show you how our memory game works. So thanks for watching. Hope you'll tune in for the next video.